Good evening. A special welcome to those who are visiting or have recently joined our parish and to those joining us online for our live broadcast. We extend a special welcome to those visitors present this evening, remembering their loved ones who have died in this past year. Today, the church celebrates the Feast of All Souls. One of the spiritual works of mercy, praying for the dead, helps our deceased loved ones on their journey to heaven. Our faith gives us confidence that those on the journey through purgatory, the purification from sin, will, through the mercy of God, come to celebrate fullness of life in God's kingdom. All the music for this liturgy can be found in the worship aid. The love of Christ has gathered us this day. In that spirit, let us stand and begin our celebration. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, God grant that I may see your endless joy and of the same partake ever be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As I look out in, into your faces, I um, know um, most of us um, come here tonight with some form of grief, um, in a sense, as we gather for this All Souls Day, a day where we pray for all of our deceased loved ones. Um, and some of us have, have lost a loved one recently, or no matter when it is, um, every form of loss and grief um, can be a weight on our heart, which is why we keep coming back to the sacraments and God's words to renew our hope. And so our prayers tonight for all of our deceased loved ones um, are united with the prayer of Jesus. 
that makes it perfect as we raise up our loved ones to God through our prayers for them tonight. So let us take a moment to prepare ourselves for this um, communion of saints as we just sang about in the opening hymn where they're joining with us in prayers for our loved ones. We take a moment to acknowledge our need for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather all people into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to us in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. And as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him, glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord.
to you, O Lord, I lift my soul, I lift my soul. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. In your merciful love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul, I lift my soul. Relieve the anguish of my heart and set me free from my distress. See my lowliness and suffering and take away all my sin. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul, I lift my soul. Preserve my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for in you I trust. May integrity and virtue protect me, for I have hoped in you, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul, I lift my soul. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. The Feast of All Souls, I don't know about for you, um, especially for maybe for those of you if you're coming for the first time for an All Souls, um, 
it's got such mixed emotions. Uh, in one sense, it's a day that's so connected to our feast yesterday of all saints. Um, and yet, uh, for many of us, um, we come here with a heavy heart, um, especially if we've had a lot of loss or a recent loss, because grief um, can be a very heavy thing on our mind, our heart. Um, again, as I look out at, at some of you who I know who have lost a loved one, especially recently, or um, just someone, anyone significant in our lives, um, grief has a, a significant effect on us. I mean, so I think we gather, and one thing I, I love about All Souls is it's a time where um, rather than just an individual funeral where we pray for the person, it's an evening where we come together and pray with each other um, in our loss. So our, our grief comes together and it's drawn into um, the person um, of Christ. So I think there's mixed emotions here. We have this hope where we know where um, we and our loved ones are going. We believe in the gift of heaven connected with um, Saints Day yesterday. Um, and yet we pray for them and our prayers for all of our deceased um, really do make a difference as our prayers like incense raise them up to God. I just want to pick out um, one word that has a variation on it in, in our first reading um, today from Paul the Romans. Um, and the word he talks about um, that I'd like is important, I think, for us to reflect on what is All Souls Day? How do our prayers, how is it connected to yesterday and do our prayers make any difference? And Paul talks about, he uses the word um, wait. What we await is a new heaven and we wait for our bodies to achieve redemption, he said. So I'd like us just to reflect briefly on that, that, that ex spiritual experience of waiting. Now, in a sense, um, yesterday um, for the great feast of all saints, we celebrated all these people who have made it to the face of God, if you will. And All Souls Day is a chance to pray for those who are on that journey um, to heaven, including our, our own souls, aren't we, all in this state of being purged yet on our way to heaven. But our prayers tonight are special for um, all of our deceased ones. I remember a long time ago in the seminary, a professor gave us uh, an article to read on this uh, about, about all souls and the spiritual and the theology of praying for um, deceased people. And the image uh, that was in this article was that the spiral or the center of the spiral um, is heaven. Um, you got Christ and the Trinity, Blessed Mother, all the saints, and then the communion of saints are in the center of this spiral. And then the spiral just keeps going and going and going um, further and further out to include all of creation. But for all souls, what this article was about is that um, our deceased loved ones are, are on that spiral going to the center, if you will, to be, a part of the, to be a part of heaven and with the saints. And we're on that spiral also. The part, the emphasis of the article was that it's all about relationship, like we talked about yesterday. We have a very close relationship with the saints, and we continue our relationship with our deceased loved ones who are on the spiral with us. See, it's not like heaven's there, purgatory's here, and we're here on earth. What I like about the spiral is that it's one communion of saints, and we're all going in one direction. Our deceased loved ones are further along the spiral, if you will, and our prayers for them tonight are encouraging them, go to the center, go to God, go to that saintly life. Um, but we are right behind you, we're with you on the spiral. So it's about that relationship because death can cause such a feeling of separation, like my loved one is out there someplace. But I love the image of all souls is that we, it reminds us that we still have an intimate relationship with our loved ones and our prayers for them are helping them to the center. And we're out here someplace as well, still in our own version of purgatory, aren't we? As daily we have to make choices of purging ourselves from selfishness, self-centeredness, um, anger, any, any of the sins. We've got to purge, ask the Spirit to purge us so that we can continue on this spiral and catch up with our loved ones. And eventually we are all part of this great beatific vision in heaven. So I look out and I see... Um, uh, your grief, I feel your grief, and I, I think about that every time I preside at Mass, um, as I look out and I see people and know your stories of, of your loss, and at every Mass as a presider, that's the privilege of being a priest, is that I pull all that in, not I, but the Spirit, but being a vessel of your grief and loss, and just kind of like there's like this funnel, and your grief comes to this altar, 
your loss, but our prayers for our loved ones then is pushing them like incense, encouraging them to go to the center with Christ. The good news is we're on the spiral with them. So I'd like you to think about where you're at on that spiral and give thanks that because of our baptism, we are on the journey. Um, Give thanks that we continue our relationship with our loved ones and that together we moment just kind of as we prepare to listen to the names of all of our deceased loved ones take a moment to place yourself in that spiral it's a spiral of God's love it's a spiral of the communion of saints and remember your relationship with all of your loved ones and our very close relationship with the saints have gone before us and in the middle of it all Christ is interceding for us Because God always hears our prayers, we rise and bring all of our needs to the Lord, particularly our prayers for our deceased loved ones, as we lift them up to God. We pray for the church, that she may be strong in her faith in the resurrection of the dead, and diligent in prayer for those who have gone before us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the example and leadership of our deceased leaders who honestly worked for justice, life, and peace may be rewarded before God with everlasting joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially the loss of children who have died or those who succumb to natural disasters and violence that the family's sufferings may be eased by hope in the life to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially for those whom have died in the last year, both the members of our community and the loved ones of our parishioners. Lee Bennett, Mary Blackburn, Jim Bamer, Ed Booger, Jerry Chambers, Gilbert Durler, Brian Duncan, Ambrose Fleming, Francis Fritch, Richard Gaynor Sr. Joanne Hartman Margaret Henke Rose Herbert David Huken David Holdener Sarah Mae Hinchcliffe Vera Jones, Andrew Ketterman, D. Kirsch, Tom Levero, Kitty Lures, Leon Matzker, Jane McManamy, Mary Missy, Richard Orr, Patricia Poledna, Barbara Ramsey, 
Dan Richter, Paul Riley, Ada Ruse Evans, Paul Rusnek, Jane Rudder, Veronica Schlosser, Diana Swan, Viola Titter, Dan Turner, Mike Van Ambra, Sandy Walter, Brant Williams, Joseph Wolf, Stephanie Zimmerman, Linda Zuber, Maria Rafala Wintrong. We pray that the power of this holy sacrifice by which Jesus released us all from the bonds of everlasting death may free the souls in purgatory who have the most need of God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear me. Oh God, take our loved ones into your arms and draw them into your sacred heart. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Christ, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. 
And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plene sunt celia terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Clair of Assisi, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. 
And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance now to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only 
you say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that all your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, we're grateful for our music ministry and our choir and the way you add to our prayer, especially on such a solemn night as tonight. Um, I also look out and I, we're so blessed with a, a grief ministry here at St. Clair led by um, Ken and Barb Kenny and they're right here to my right in the front in case you don't know them and we haven't talked about it but maybe Ken and Barb will just um, stand in the vestibule to my right on your way out in case um, you would like to learn more about our grief ministry. Um, they meet uh, once a month, once um, during the day and in the evening. Um, if you want to be a part of that, just come. It's, it's not therapy, it's just a time to just meet with other people, um, parishioners who've also lost a loved one. So if you'd like to learn more about that, um, Barbara and Ken will be out front of the gathering space um, just to, if you have any questions about that. And other parishioners who've already been a part of that as well have found great value in that. So thank you, Barbara and Ken, for that ministry um, and all those who um, help one another um, in our grief. I look out and I see some people who, because of the COVID year, weren't even able to have a full funeral for their loved ones. So in a special way, they are with us tonight in prayer. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you.